Lego, you're overreacting. Lego, you're overreacting. Lego, you're overreacting. It's going to be okay. You know what? I hope it's going to be okay. I hope that I am completely a fool for making this video, let's say, a week from now, two weeks from now. I go out there and I look up on my channel and I say, darn, I was an idiot for making that video. This video that you're watching right now, I hope that this video looks stupid by the time a week comes and goes, because when it comes to the overreactions that I've been seeing, sure, we're going out there and we're indulging in that a little bit in this video, but I do think there's some pretty interesting reasons as to why things are popping up in the ways that they are. So, today we're talking about the Vancouver Canucks, today we're talking about JT Miller, today we're talking about the idea that he kind of is a bad contract now. Oh boy, I'm gonna get so many people in the comments claiming I'm overreacting like them. Okay, I can't say that. That's, yeah, no, bad Kanye lyrics. I can't go out there and say that on YouTube. But either way, the reason we're making this video is because of this article posted onto the Canucks subreddit. This is a piece made by Patrick Johnston from yesterday. JT Miller is not ready to hit the panic button. And the quote in the headline is, oh boy, just read this yourself. I'm trying to be patient, but I'm not going to change the way I'm playing away from the puck and in my own end, because I don't think I've given up much of anything there. Now that quote by itself, by itself, that quote is pretty bad. It's Miller saying, yeah, I'm not going to change the way I play. I think I've been doing all right. In my own end, I don't think I've given much up of anything there. And this quote in the article was posted onto the Canucks subreddit. And I mean, you could see the comments. What? Wing Ding Canuck says... Exidu says, yeah, you're wrong, JT. This is embarrassing. The lack of leadership and accountability he has. The country club is real. Trade him for anything you can get, please. His albatross of a contract will sink us. You have all the other replies saying, yeah, no, the contract is untradeable. No team is going to go out there and take this $56 million guy. And you talk about the performance, how good he's been playing or how poorly he's been playing, excuse me. And you look at the comments here that he said where he feels like he's all right. There is just so much in this comment section where it's like, yeah, no, people are freaking out about JT and everything. Now, I will say, when it comes to Miller and the way he's played so far, you know how he's played so far, or at least you know how I feel about his play so far. He hasn't been good. He's been definitely not the shade of 99 points, or excuse me, 100 points like we had thought he was last season. But I will go out there and give the guy the benefit of the doubt. I don't want to start comparing him completely to Louis Erickson just yet, because if you go back to this De Province article... I think you gotta go out there and look at the quote in full before making your judgments, because, of course, Patrick Johnson puts the quote in the headline there, and it looks really bad, but if you take a look at everything else Miller says, it does make a little bit more sense. So, we'll go out there and read what Patrick Johnson writes about in this article regarding Miller's comments, in totality, that is, not just the isolated, I'm not gonna change the way I play comment. Miller was letting his team down in all facets, he said, adding some colorful language into the mix. Bad luck, he said at the time, didn't matter. The results were the only thing. Five days later, Miller feels it's the process that is important. My game, where I've really tried to work on, is five on five in my own end, and worrying about that first. Offense later. And if I look at the way I've been playing there, I feel really good about what I've done so far, Miller said. And to be fair, I mean, five on five, the team as a whole has been pretty good. And I definitely don't want to single out any individual player for five on five play. Sure, there are turnovers once in a while, but a lot of the really poor showcases of Miller on the ice have been during either five on four penalty moments or let's just say, four on three, like the overtime against Minnesota. That was really bad. There have been some true miscues by Miller, some leading directly to goals, but opponents aren't actually getting any more shots away with Miller on the ice than they have in the past. It's just that nothing is happening offensively for the Canucks when Miller, who signed a new $8 million AAV contract, is on the ice. Through the first five games of the season, the Canucks are getting shots away at just 60% the rate they did last season when Miller was on the ice at 5v5. When you watch Miller, you see him fighting for the puck. 
This is what he says as well. The timing really hasn't been there yet for offense, Miller admitted. But I think it would be immature for me to hit the panic button. I'm trying to be patient, but I'm not going to change the way I'm playing. Away from the puck and in my own end, because I don't think I've given up much of anything there. Last year, there was plenty of times where I didn't play well and I had two points. And you know what? I'm going to just take a little bit of a caveat there. Miller's 100% right about that. There were so many games last season where he ended up getting multi-point games, like two, three points on the night, yet we're still going out there in the post-game video saying, yeah, no, I don't think Miller played all too well. Like, there are some bad reads that he made, there were some defensive lapses where the team was kind of built up by Demko that Miller was a part of, and like... This is kind of why I was skeptical initially when Miller was named to all these top 50 lists, top 100 players lists, and he was like over there in the same caliber of guy as like, I don't know, whoever the heck else is included on these lists, like Martian or whatever. Like Miller being on that list is okay. It's just a lot of people I feel ranked Miller because of the point production specifically, and not necessarily because they have been watching Vancouver games, analyzing every individual play like many of us do over here. Miller's saying that he's played games where he gets points and he still doesn't think that he played well. And ultimately, the message that he's sending is that it's not really time to hit the panic button just yet, especially five games into the year, and that he's going to be patient and not try to make any drastic changes right away. I have a lot of confidence. I have more and more jump in each skate. I'm being honest, really. I'm just worried about today. I'm not worried about what's happened. Is it possible that he's letting himself get too overhyped in the middle of all this? I don't play relaxed, Miller answered. I tried that. There are some more comments here made by Miller and how they're doing good things every game, they're getting shots out, and Bruce Boudreaux went out there and made some comments too, but at the end of the day, just the isolated quote right here begged a crazy discussion on the Canucks sub the other day, comparing Miller to Erickson. Some people were saying like, oh, Louis 2.0, this is gonna be a terrible contract in a few years. I definitely still do have concerns, right? I mean, Miller gets 99 points when he's 28, 29 years old. He signs a contract till the end of 20... 29, I think it is, and he's going to be 37 by the time that contract comes to an end, and he's going to be making $8 million a year. That is absolutely beefy. But at the very least, we were all sort of confident that for the first year, two, three, four years even maybe, Miller would be an effective enough player to maybe fulfill the $8 million cap hit. It's just the first few games of this season have had him, Hughes, Bo, and Demko all just kind of be mediocre. I said this yesterday, but even though Quinn Hughes is a point-per-game defenseman, can you say he's really been playing his best? Even Thatcher Demko, he's been getting hung out to dry like crazy because this defense stinks. But can you say he's been playing his best? I'm not sure I can say a lot of that about anybody except for maybe Elias Pettersson. And Pettersson, I mean, he still has had a few mislapses and turnovers here and there that have led to significant opportunities for the opposition over the past five games. So even the best player on the team, Elias Pettersson, has not been the absolute peak that he's able to be. So obviously five games is a small sample size, and I don't want to go out there and make it seem like I'm the guy saying that Miller is going to be the next Louis, but I did want to bring that conversation up on the channel, just acknowledge that it existed because it was so prominent the other day, and I definitely do think that if things get worse from here on out, let's say Miller completely tanks, he gets 45 points in 2022-2023 in 82 games played. Then all of a sudden we have an opportunity to say that Miller is going to be the next Erickson. But if he can at the very least go out there and have those games where he plays poorly but he gets two points, sign me up, baby. Honestly, like, we know that a lot of these other guys are going to get better as the days go on. Bo is probably going to get better. Petey's probably going to get better. They're playing really poorly right now, so it's tough to go out there and predict this to get worse, right? They haven't had problems scoring goals. Absolutely not. It's just they need to be better off the puck and they need to learn how to defend. Even the forwards. It's the accountability right here, man. I'm not saying Miller is completely out to lunch for saying that he's been playing all right in his own zone, but take a look at the full context of that quote. He's kind of going over everything and saying that he needs to improve defensively five on five and everything. So... Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire conversation over here. Miller, the comments that he made, the idea that he might be the next Erickson, and the overreacting, panicking, freaking out of everybody in Canuck Nation because we don't have anything good to talk about. Hopefully the Buffalo game today changes that.
Hopefully it does. But talk in the comments on your thoughts either way about Miller. Hope you enjoyed this video. Shrolls 99. And bye.